Now we turn our attention to a case involving another alleged terrible mom on trial, Letitia Stauk. She's on trial for the murder of her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon. She's 39 years old, accused of fatally stabbing and shooting the child, and then driving his body all the way to Florida, put him in a suitcase and discarded him like he was trash. Now, she has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. She's not denying that she stabbed him and that she shot him uh, in the child's bedroom in their home where she was caring for him while the child's dad was serving our country in the Coast Guard. Uh, she's not denying that, but she's just saying she was insane at the time she did it, that she didn't know right from wrong at the time. Now on Tuesday, the jury heard very vivid testimony from a crime scene investigator detailing the bloody landscape left behind in little Gannon's bedroom. Uh, there were over 50 drops of blood found on the walls and evidence of cleanup after that crime. Now, it appears that the altercation led up to a very violent, and violent was the word used by the CSI uh, witness, death for Gannon. Let's listen. How many different swabs did you take? I collected 10 swabs. Um, did you use that same exact process you just described? I did. And then did you actually submit those into evidence for sub subsequent um, lab testing if necessary? I did. What were your impressions of this particular scene? Um, when I first walked in, I couldn't see any of the bloodstains. Um, it wasn't until we got pretty close to the wall um, and we were really, really looking for them that we found them. And after we had identified them, which um, it took about an hour and a half to go through and identify all of those um, tiny little bloodstains, uh, it definitely was not a static event. Um, there was something dynamic that happened there, um, more than just a single event um, within that room. What do you mean by that? I've been to crime scenes with a single gunshot wound that has no blood. I've been to crime scenes with a few stab wounds that have no blood. Um, to have blood at that scale and of those types of patterns, um, there has to be some movement within that scene. Um, so some object with blood, whether it's um, the blood source itself, um, impact events, or a bloody object being swung, um, was present within that room. It is very clear that little Gannon died a brutal, and I mean brutal death. This child suffered in a way that no child should ever suffer at the hands of the person responsible for caring for him. And she's saying she didn't know right from wrong, couldn't appreciate her actions at the time that she stabbed him many, many, many times. I believe 18 stab wounds in total, if my memory serves me correctly, and also uh, shot him as well. Uh, let me bring in my guest, forensic psychologist, Dr. John Delatore, standing by in San Antonio, Texas, where he practices, and in Philadelphia, trial attorney Sarah Klein is, who's with the, the firm Manley Stewart in Finaldi out of California. Sarah's also the podcast host of the podcast Bar Fights. Uh, great to have you both on the program. Uh, woo, uh, let's begin with, with how Letitia Stauk claims to have not known what she was doing all of those times she was stabbing that child. Uh, Dr. John, she claims she has dissociative identity disorder, which I understand used to be called multiple personality disorder. Does that defense make any sense to you? No, not at all. Because, I mean, even if you believe that uh, DID exists, now it is a disorder in the DSM, so technically it does exist, but the science behind it is inconclusive when it comes to the prevalence of this thing. But the idea is that there's an altered personality, right? There's another person living within, within inside the person that that person, the person who committed this crime, wouldn't know right from wrong. And, and that seems preposterous to me. I, I cannot see that DID. So essentially, in order to evaluate, you'd have to get that alter to come out. And if the alter doesn't come out, you have to assume that she was sane at the time of the offense. That's by, by, by law, you have to do that. I'm not seeing this as being accurate there. I've seen no evidence to support that she has anything that uh, re resembling a serious mental illness, such as dissociative identity disorder.
Appreciate it, Dr. John. In her own child, her own daughter, biological daughter, gave heartbreaking testimony we saw this week saying her mother never suffered from a mental illness, never got any treatment for anything. Uh, nobody knew about it, but apparently at trial time, uh, it's being presented. Uh, Attorney Sarah Klein, uh, you are a fierce advocate for children, also a mother and one of the sweetest people on the planet. This case has to boil your blood, just like the cult mom case we were just talking about. Uh, your thoughts, please. Absolutely. There is no excuse for this kind of behavior. As you said, Julie, it is a parent's job to protect your child at all costs. And the fact that this woman did not harm her children once, but over and over and over and over, there has to be something incredibly disturbed in her brain. And clearly, you know, this, this was not a, a, a quick moment of, you know, switching into a multiple person personality. This was a conscious decision to harm the most precious thing that this woman was charged with caring for. And I will say, like Lori Daybell, these women look vacant in the eyes. I'm looking at her picture now. There is no excuse for harming a child, much less your own. Amen. Amen, Sarah. Uh, and Dr. John, speaking of the, the vacant look, I love you pointed that out, Sarah. You know, we've seen some of these crazy antics from Letitia Stauk. I mean, she attacked a sheriff's deputy, hit uh, the, the female deputy over the head with an energy drink during transport. In the courtroom, the judge admonished her for uh, a, a lewd gesture she kept repeatedly making at witnesses uh, with uh, one of her fingers uh, because she didn't like their testimony. Um, what, what do those things say to you, please, Dr. John? Well, I think if we go back to if she's saying that she has uh, alters, right? She has different personalities within her. What's unique about it is that they would be elicited from stress. And so a trial is obviously stressful. Being in jail is obviously stressful. So I, it's possible that she's either, the, these alters are being, you know, they're manifesting themselves and they're engaging in the problematic behaviors like violence that would be similar to, you know, what she's been accused of doing or she's trying to make a way in which other people would believe that she cannot control her impulses by acting aggressively, by acting inappropriately during times in which she knows that she's supposed to. So it's it's just simply demonstration. Uh, it's, it's simply a false and she's doing what she can to prove that she has a, a, a disorder that she actually does not have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there it is. The hands up have to be blurred uh, per our standards in production team at Court TV Network. Uh, but she is a real peach, uh, Letitia Stalk. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, to her.